Welcome to Good Shepherd Baptist Church streaming services. Catch us at goodshepherdbaptist.org or on our Facebook page every Sunday at 10 a.m. Also join us on Mondays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. The days and times listed on your screen are also available on the website. In just a few moments, we will be joining Bishop Jeffrey L. Reeves Sr., Senior Pastor of Good Shepherd Baptist Church with today's message. We can be reached at goodshepherdbaptist.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. And giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. God bless you and good morning, Good Shepherd. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody come here to praise the Lord? Anybody come to magnify Him? Let's bless His name. Come on, clap your hands wherever you are. Everybody say, I can't. I can't the Lord. Praise His holy name.
tell somebody, say, I never let a rock cry out of my grace. Tell somebody, say, he's worthy of all our praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whoa. Tell somebody, say, he's been good to me. And I got a right to praise him. And right where you are in your home, in your cars, on your jobs, wherever you are, you ought to lift your voice and say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just came to praise you. Woo! Praise looks good on you. So you might as well keep on praising God. Bless the Lord. The Shepherd Staff Books, Gifts, and Music has the new word for you today. Stop by and get the new edition of this incredible devotional. The Shepherd Staff Books, Gifts, and Music is open Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Inside of Good Shepherd at 2223 South Crater Road in Petersburg. You may also call at 804-863-2665. That's 804-863-BOOK. The Shepherd Staff, books, gifts, and music with the new word for you today. Good Shepherd Baptist Church is awarding members who are first-time college students and continuing education students with a scholarship from the Carl Williams Memorial Scholarship Fund. All members who are interested in receiving a 2022 scholarship must complete the application, write a personal statement, and submit your grades. Applications may be downloaded from goodshepherdbaptist.org. All applications must be received by Sunday, March 13th. For more information, please contact Brother Joseph Lyons at jlyons at vsu.edu. That's the 2022 Carl Williams Memorial Scholarship. Good Shepherd would like to thank all volunteers who helped with this past food distribution. We cannot do this without you. Our next distribution will be Wednesday, March 9th. Those who wish to volunteer once again may do so on our website as early as this Wednesday, December 15th. Once again, thank you for helping us to be a blessing. The next term for the Practical Life Institute begins February 20th and runs through April 10th. All courses are free and virtual. Courses include God's Plan, a study in Jeremiah 29, True Spirituality, Becoming a Romans 12 Christian, The Forgotten God, Reversing Our Neglect of the Holy Spirit, in addition, we will be offering new members orientation class. Go to practicallife.org for class descriptions and registration. There is also a link from goodshepherdbaptist.org as well as our social media platforms. The Practical Life Institute Winter Term, February 20th through April 10th. Join us for a Youth Ministry Moment with Pastor Angel White. Youth Ministry Moment takes place at 11.30 a.m. every fourth Sunday. Join us for this time of encouragement and empowerment.
Good morning, Good Shepherd. God bless you. Thank you again for tuning in to our Sunday morning worship services. We thank God for this virtual opportunity that we have, as always, to come and to share with you a word from the Lord. I want you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Oh, gracious God, we ask now, Lord, that you would again come down our souls to greet, allow your glory to fill the mercy seat. Have your way in all of us. I pray, oh God, that you would anoint your servant afresh with the kind of anointing that will make preaching easy for me. Oh God, please manage my mind, amplify my voice, and set my soul ablaze with the Holy Spirit. God, I'm thanking you in advance for all that you're going to do now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're starting a new sermon series this morning um, entitled Developing a Community. We have taken the moniker with which we have been describing ourselves as a congregation uh, over the last few years. And of course, you know it is that we are building a church, developing a community, expanding services, and impacting lives. And I want to start a series of sermons, if I can, under the title of Developing a Community. And I want to invite your attention to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4. Ecclesiastes, chapter 4. And we're going to read from verses 9 through 12. Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, beginning at the ninth verse. The scripture reads this way. It says, Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person fails, the other person can reach out and help, but someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm, but how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Amen. Thus ends the reading of God's word. I want to entitle this first installment of this series this way, I need your help. I need your help. There's a thin line, my brothers and sisters, that exists between our spiritual and our social selves. That is why it is important for us to seek and to develop positive connections with other people. Studies on this subject have revealed that people who seek and develop positive connections with others, they tend to function better. Their health is improved and their life expectancy is extended. The need for positive connections with others enables us to find someone with whom we are compatible. That compatibility fosters a spirit and a structure of cooperation. And in the long term, it may provide the opportunity for you to care for and for you to be cared for by others. For all of my sanctified people who are listening to the sermon this morning, could this be why the Bible speaks of not being unequally yoked. The verse is actually found in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 14. And there it says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do unrighteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? The idea behind the verse lies 
in both the meaning and the function of the yoke. You see, a yoke is a wooden bar that joins two oxen to each other and to the burden that they pull. So that term, being unequally yoked, um, has to do with the oxen that are yoked together. Uh, a lot of times, one ox is stronger than the other, or one ox may be taller than the other. And so uh, the weaker or the shorter ox will walk more slowly than the taller or the stronger ox, causing the load to go around in circles. Thus, my brothers and sisters, they are not able to perform the task that is before them. So that's why, my brothers and sisters, we need to be careful concerning the company that we keep. Those persons uh, with whom we form partnerships, the people that are a part of our community become critically important. You do know, my friend, that the Bible says that bad company corrupts good character. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but the time for wasting time is over. The call of the psalmist in Scripture reminding us to redeem the time for the days of evil has become for me both clearer and necessary. You see, my purpose is at stake. My productivity is at stake. How I perform is at stake. And that's why, my friends, you and I need people around us who will help us and not hurt us. We need people around us who will hold us accountable and not corrupt us. We need people who will build us up and not tear us down. We need people around us, my friends, who will be an asset and not a liability in our lives. So please, my friends, allow me sermonically to stand in the middle of the street for you and shout at the top of my lungs and say to any and all potential suitors who may become a part of our beloved community, I need your help. Don't violate me. Don't take advantage of my vulnerability. As I stand this morning in this place of humility and admit outwardly and openly, I need your help. I don't care what you say, my friends. Everybody needs somebody. Look at the scriptures, and you will find that Adam had Eve to be his helpmate. Moses had Aaron and her to hold up his hands in the midst of a battle. Ruth had a Naomi in a time of personal crisis. My God, Esther had her uncle Mordecai to help keep her grounded and inspire her to greatness. Even Jesus, when he sent out his disciples, he didn't send them out one by one, but he sent them out in pairs. Come on, talk to me this morning. Paul, he had Silas with him in the jail. He had Epaphroditus who risked his life in order to come and comfort him. Everybody needs somebody. And my friends, I want to tell you this morning that the list goes on and on. I'm telling you, I need your help. Amen. If I'm going to be a part of a community and if you're going to be a part of my community, amen, we're going to have to, as I mentioned a moment ago, amen, stand in a place of humility, admit, amen, our vulnerability, ask for the help and the assistance of others and say, like I'm saying this morning to someone else, I need your help. But can I tell you, as I close this morning, can I tell you what I really need? May I suggest to you that when we talk about community, when we talk about partnerships, when we talk about people coming together, may I suggest to you that the word in the Bible, amen, that describes that kind of connection is a word called koinonia. And may I suggest to you that uh, koinonia has to do with several things. It has to do with relationship, it has to do with partnership, and it has to do with fellowship. And may I suggest to you today as I, as I close that 
that when I say, amen, that I need your help, I got to tell you what I'm really looking for. I'm looking for koinonia. I'm looking, first of all, for a relationship that's reliable. Somebody say that with me. Type it in the comments if you don't mind. Amen. I need a relationship that is reliable. Can I tell you, my friends, that in this selfish society uh, in which we currently live, Amen. There are so many persons who are in relationships with others only until it's convenient. They remain in relationships until things become challenging. They, they hang out and stay connected with people as long as that person is on top. But don't ever let that person fall. Amen. The people that were once connected to them will fall off like flies. But can I tell you, child of God, that that's not what, amen, the Bible calls us to. The Bible calls us to a kind of uh, relationship that is always reliable. And we get, my friends, the idea, amen, of this reliable relationship, amen, when we look at the relationship, number one, between God and Jesus Christ. And then secondly, as we look at the relationship between Christ and us, I don't care what you say, my brothers and sisters, those are reliable relationships. I got to tell you, everybody who's listening to me today that has any kind of relationship with the Lord, you can say honestly and testify Amen. That you can put your trust in the Lord. We need a relationship that is reliable. Can I tell you, child of God, amen, if you're going to fulfill your assignment, amen, you're not going to be able to do it in a vacuum. You're going to need other people with whom you can partner, amen. You're going to need people in your life, amen, they're going to help you get the job done. And I, I know, child of God, amen, that anything that is worth anything, amen, it's, it's going to be a process. That process is so critical that you need people that you can count on. I wish I had a witness here. Suppose, amen, the process takes a turn that nobody expects, amen. That's not the time that you need for people to abandon you and leave you alone. No, you need people to stand with you, amen, when times are hard. And so I'm telling you again, we need relationships that are reliable, but secondly, as I hurry to a close, not only do we need relationships that are reliable, and we also need up need partnerships that are reciprocal. Let me say that one more time. Amen. We don't just need relationships that are reliable. We also need partnerships that are reciprocal. Let me say it one more time and tell you, amen, don't come and stand alongside me and you don't want to share and shoulder the load that I have to carry. I can't get nobody to help me here. Amen. I, I need you in those moments of life. Amen. When things are hard and when I feel the pressure when I'm going through those moments that feel overwhelming. I need someone, amen, that has a stake. I wish I had a witness here in the outcome. And they're willing to offer, amen, to me a partnership that is reciprocal. I got to tell you, child of God, that sometimes, amen, I've seen it. Amen. People in relationships only for what they can get out of it. They bring nothing to the table. I wish I had time, amen, to talk about this like I feel because I can walk the dog, but I'm afraid I might hurt somebody's feelings. But I'm telling you, amen, that some people are only in the relationship for what they can get out of it. Amen. They, they're in the partnership, amen, because they're receiving, amen, but they hardly ever want to share. But can I tell you, child of God, amen, this relationship, this partnership has got to be a two-way street. Amen. You need people in your life that can help you. I wish I had a witness here. Carry the load. Amen. You need people in your life that are able to help you to stand up under the weight and the pressure. You need a relationship that is reliable. You need a partnership that is reciprocal. But most of all, Konania has to do with fellowship. 
And whereas you need a relationship that's reliable and a partnership that is reciprocal, you also need a fellowship that is spiritual. I'm going to say that once and ever again. Amen. You need a fellowship that is spiritual. May I suggest to you, my friends, that a lot of times we want fellowships that are natural. We want fellowships that are sexual and sensual. But I got to tell you, child of God, amen, that what the scriptures is talking about here in this case is a spiritual fellowship. I wish I had a witness here. Let me try one more time. It's a spiritual fellowship, child of God, that has both vertical and horizontal connotations. May I suggest to you, my friends, that yes, we are called to be spiritual to one another. Amen. But can I, in a horizontal sense, but can I tell you, child of God, amen, that if each one of us are not in a meaningful and spiritual your relationship with God, amen, we are going to prove to be a liability, amen, in terms of being spiritual when we're in relationships with one another. Let me try one more time. Somebody, amen, help me with this. Type in the comments and say, keep it spiritual. Put, put, I wish I had a witness here. Put quotation marks around that, amen, and put in the comments and say, keep it spiritual. Amen. I need, amen, a fellowship that is spiritual. Why? Amen. Because destiny destiny hangs in the balance. My purpose is at stake. I wish I had a witness here. How I'm able to perform, amen, and the proficiency with which I do it is at stake. I need in my life, amen, a fellowship that is spiritual. May I suggest to you, my friends, that we can find, amen, these three and other people, Amen. Perhaps we can. Amen. We can look for them. I, I encourage you to seek and to develop. Amen. Re a relationship that is reliable, a partnership that is reciprocal, a fellowship that is spiritual. Amen. And I pray that you find it. Amen. In the people. Amen. That you are connected to. But can I tell you as I close here very quickly. Amen. That we can. We hope to find these qualities and others. But we know that we already have them in Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, some have suggested, amen, here in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and, and uh, verse 12, where it talks about, amen, a threefold cord uh, not being broken. Amen. It, it, it ha has some um, idea of not only you and I, amen, being in relationship with one another, amen, but including God in that relationship. I can't see if I can get this, make this live, amen. So I'm one, you're two, amen, and God makes three. A threefold cord, amen, is not easily broken. Let me see if I can make it live a little bit better and tell you that uh, it, when uh, my daughter was young, I was charged and left Amen. With making sure amen, she got to school on time. And uh, because she had my heart, amen, I, would, I wouldn't uh, let her get on the bus. I would drive her to school. But on the way to school, she had to go by McDonald's every day. We went to McDonald's every day and got something to eat before I dropped her off at school. Well, I got to tell you that uh, because she had to be to school early, amen, there were times when not only did I have the task of taking her to school and the joy of taking her to McDonald's, I had also the responsibility of making sure her hair was done. I can't get nobody to talk to me now. Amen. Some of you can uh, join in with me on this. I was not Amen. A good hair doer, if that's the word. Amen. <laughs> don't, amen. Don't, don't ask me to do hair. I can't do that. And there were many mornings when, amen, it was a problem because all I could do was put a hat on her head. Amen. And take her to school. I thought it was a pretty hat. Had a little bow on it. Amen. But I put a hat on her head because I could not fix her hair. Amen. Well, I, I tried to braid her hair. I wish somebody would talk about it. I'd seen it enough done. Amen. I grew up in the house where, amen, my mother braided my sister's hair. I have seen, amen, my wife braid my daughter's hair. I thought maybe I could duplicate. I tried to grab me three strands. I wish I had a witness here of her hair and braid it. And, well, I braided it. It was all right. Uh, probably wasn't too good of a braid. 
Amen. But uh, I, I would braid her hair, and because it was kind of halfway done, I still would slap a hat on her head, and off to school we go. She didn't care. She was just a child. But can I tell you that when she got back home and her mama saw it, she had uh, to, to take those braids out. I wish I had a witness here. Can I tell you that because... My, the fact that I was challenged, y'all want to help me here, in the area of braiding hair, amen, I would braid it too tight, I would, I, I'm talking about, listen, it wouldn't be braided, it was more like knotted, and to watch, amen, her mother try, amen, to untangle, I wish I had a witness here, what I called a braid, but was really a knot, it was a hard thing to do, and that's what I'm trying to tell you, child of God, is that when we get together with one another, and when we're all get together with God, we become a formidable team. May I suggest to you, child of God, again, that a threefold cord is not easily broken. Doesn't say that it can't be broken. Amen. But it's going to be hard to do so. And what I want to tell you, child of God, Amen. I need you. Amen. I need your help. Amen. But I don't need just any kind of help from you. I need you to bring into my life the God kind of help. And I need to bring into your life the God kind of help. And I'm telling you, child of God, amen, that when we get together, there's no telling what we can do. Amen. When we form community, I wish I had a witness here, and bring to bear all of our capabilities in order to advance the kingdom of God. And there's no telling what we can do together. And so I'm telling you, child of God, we are called not only to build a church, but we're also called to develop a community. Amen. Can I tell you, child of God, that any kind of community is not going to do. Amen. We need to bring ourselves together and develop the kinds of community that will bring glory and honor to God. I, I wish I had a witness that people will get together now for just about anything. I, I wish I had a witness here. As a matter of fact, it has been said in a wider sense. Amen. That people form community for at least five reasons. Number one, they have shared interests. Amen. Number two, they'll come together. Amen. For a common purpose and goal. They'll come together. Yes, Lord. In a moment of crisis. I wish I had a witness here. Amen. They'll come together. Amen. Despite their differences. Because they understand. Amen. That their differences not with standing. Amen. They complement one another. And I've got to tell you, child of God, yes, Lord. Amen. That we are called to develop a community. Amen. That will advance the kingdom of God. We're called to develop a community that'll put a face, yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. On what it means to be a Christian so that the world will look at us. They'll see us and the way we relate to one another. Amen. They will know us by our love. They'll see the kindness and compassion. Amen. That we demonstrate towards one another. Amen. They'll see Matthew 25 ministry in action. Yes, Lord. They'll see people come together. Yes, yeah, that would not otherwise be together had it not been for Christ death on the cross at Calvary. Come on, somebody help me preach this now. And can I tell you that I might not fool with you and you probably wouldn't fool with me had it not been for the death of Christ on Calvary's cross. Can I tell you he brought us together. Can I tell you that he tore down the middle wall of petition between us. He brought us together under the umbrella of the cross Cross. Have I got a witness? And in this community, there are no big eyes and little U's. In this community, everybody's lending a helping hand. In this community, there is no competition in the work. I said, in this community, we are connected as worshipers. Yes, we are partners in praise. I wish I had a witness. We are co-laborers with Christ. 
Yes, Lord. And we are those who have been given the assignment to steward the ministry, to manage, yes, Lord, the work of the church. And I'm telling you, child of God, anybody can't do that kind of work. You got to be born again. You have to have your heart changed. Have I got a witness? You have to be able to have the wherewithal from the Lord to be reliable in your relationship. I wish I had somebody would help me here. Can I tell you, you got to have the kind of power that comes only from God so that you can be the kind of person that shares like a partner, that provides spiritual fellowship to your brothers and your sisters. I got to get y'all out of here. But can I tell you, you have that you're my brother yep. you're my sister yep. have I got a witness yep. we're working together yep. yes we are yep. and can I tell you yep, that when we work together yep, there's no weapon yep, that can defeat us yep, when we're walking yep, and working side by side yep. come on somebody give God the glory right there yep, and praise the Lord and say we're better when we work together come on say we're better when we work together I need your help I'm asking you for it I'm praying that you'll give it I need your help take my hand and let's do what God has called us to do we thank God thank God thank God Thank God, I'm done, I'm done on this. Th th thank God, thank God that he has created us relationally. There is a need for compatibility. There is the need for cooperation. There is the need for care and concern to be shared one to another. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for putting in our path people who will hear our cry and call for help. They'll come over to where we are and they'll help us carry out and continue the work of our Lord. Bow your heads with me. You're my brother. You're my sister. Oh, please take me by the hand. We will work till he comes. He comes again. And you know what I know, children? Oh, there's no weapon that can defeat us Lord when we're working side by side oh we'll work till he comes oh he comes again I feel like singing that one more time can you help me sing it oh you're my brother yes you're my sister lord please take me by my hand you know what we're gonna do we're gonna work all oh, till it comes our god comes again oh there's no weapon oh that can defeat us oh when we're working side by side oh we will work work till it comes yes he comes 
comes again. Sometimes you got to sing it till your soul gets happy. Oh, you're my brother. Yes, you're my sister. Oh, please take me. Take me by my hand. And we will work. Work till he comes. He comes again. Oh, there's no weapon that can defeat us oh when we're working side by side oh we'll work till he comes again Amen. That's my prayer. That's my plea. That we will help one another. We will continue to work until Jesus calls us home to be with him. If you bow your heads, Father, we thank you for our time together in the word. We ask now, Lord, as we come together symbolically to your table, that you will consecrate us afresh. Oh, God, make any necessary changes that need to be made in us so that we will not bring disgrace and dishonor to your name as we sit at the table with you. We pray, Lord, that when the time comes for us to go from the table, that we go forward with confidence, when we go forward as a reflection of who you are in the earth, and may we be to one another as you have been to us. It's our prayer we ask now in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to ask you now to get whatever you have in your homes and like and join us in the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> Scriptures clearly remind us that as often as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we ought to do it in the remembrance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It was the same night that Jesus was joining with his disciples as they ate the feast of the Passover that Jesus took the bread, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body which has been broken for you. In like manner he also took the cup and when he had given thanks, he said unto them, Drink ye all of it. This cup represents the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for many that their sins may be forgiven. Matthew 26 and 30 declares, And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. We go forward, facing our own set of challenges, knowing that if that Jesus cannot bear the cross alone and all the world go free, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. This consecrated cross will bear till death shall set us free. And then we're going home, our crown to wear, for there is a crown for me. We pray that you'll enjoy. Amen. Our music ministry as they come back before us and close us out in song. Come on, let's celebrate and rejoice praise and worship to the glory of his name. We'll see you on tomorrow.
He has brought the deliverance to his people. So come on, give God praise with us as we sing deliverance has come. Come on and bless it. Come on, put your hands together right there. Hallelujah. See? 
Thank you for joining us today for Good Shepherd Services. Giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or using the app, click the Give Online icon. Follow us on social media on Facebook at Good Shepherd Baptist, Twitter and Instagram at Good Shepherd BC. And the Good Shepherd app is yet another great tool to keep connected. Download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. We air every Sunday on Fox Richmond at 7.30 a.m. Please watch and support the broadcast. Good Shepherd Baptist Church, 2223 South Crater Road in Petersburg, Virginia. You may call at 804-732-5969. Building a church, developing a community, expanding services, and impacting lives. We thank you for the support of this ministry. See you next time.